pick up these pens. Thanks, y'all, for your patience. Appreciate Sorry, you guys. joining us. Um, just a couple of obvious stats that I think all of you already know by now, but uh, obviously with tonight's win, uh, first ever playoff clinch in Austin FC history. Uh, this does mark our 32nd consecutive sellout at Q2 Stadium, extending the league's longest active streak. And uh, a special congratulations to Musa Jite for uh, scoring the first hat trick in club history. With that said, I'll pass it over to head coach Joshua for an opening statement. Josh? Yeah, I think we're, we're really excited, obviously, um, first ever for this, this organization and club to achieve making the playoffs. We still have some work left um, to try to push up the table, but uh, it's, it's, a great, um, it's a great achievement. Obviously, we set out in the beginning of the year when we brought this group together and talked about some of the things that we wanted to achieve this year and um, putting the season in different phases, and, and uh, the guys have worked uh, – you know, in a tireless manner from, from the off season to preseason. And, um, you know, a lot of credit goes to the players. The staff uh, does extremely good work and hard work. And um, it's good to get rewarded with tonight. It's, you know, last year was last year. It was laying the foundation. It was difficult at times. But, um, you know, we had ideas and, and certainly hopes and, and dreams that it would, would, would continue to evolve and grow, and it has. And tonight's performance was literally a snapshot of what, what we've talked about all year, kind of our phases. The fast start we got off to, was, again, was good. We didn't get rewarded with a goal. And then we, we grind. We embrace the struggle. And that's what it's like. You play Salt Lake. You play Nashville. You're going to have to dig, and you're going to have to suffer a little bit. And these guys come together. They stay together. Um, and they know that it's about how you finish, how you can push at the end. What do you have left in the tank to now challenge the opponent? And to grab three goals in the manner that we did and for it to be Musa Jute, um, you know, I couldn't be happier for him. The guy is, is, is an incredible person and um, our first ever hat trick, as, as, as Ryan mentioned. But uh, a great collective effort. Um, and now we'll focus on Nashville and continue to try to move up the, the, the uh, table or stay in, in second place and, and chase down LAFC if we can. But home field, that's the most important thing next. So. Before we open it up to questions, Josh, we do have one from Jonathan Siegel at MLSsoccer.com. His question is, has the growth of this club in year two sunk in yet? And how far do you think this team can go when everything's clicking? It's, it's hard to... Um, it's hard to enjoy it. That's, I'd say for me as a person, that's the most challenging thing is to enjoy the, the progress and certainly the success of this team. It, it has been there. It's been quite strong from the, from the get-go this year. Um, there's still more growth. I think you know, tonight you're playing a team that changes structure and throws a lot at you and is difficult. And uh, You have 11 Pablo Mastroianis running around there competing, and then they made it difficult. <laughs> they really did. They made it tough. And you gotta you gotta face that and cruise through it and, and, and try to be in a better space in the second half. And we, we talked about some things that have. There were for me a real clear opportunity for Musa to come into this game, reflecting on when we played them last year in a very similar structure and his utilization. So um, the team is growing. The team has evolved. The players have taken on more information, um, but they also are very comfortable with what we started with last year, and, and we've expanded on that. We've added players. Um, we've, we've had highs and lows. So all of that plays into to what we have today, and um, we're hopeful we can get in the playoffs and make a run. We're just like every other team, but the more we can finish in second place or first place that you can ensure playing in front of these fans and getting this boost, um, the better your chances are of whoever is here. We've shown that. We can beat anybody in this league. Um, and we're, we're quite comfortable being in Q2 and, 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 and certainly pushing the, pushing the intensity, pushing the game. And, um, you know, next, next game is against Nashville, and it's an important one. It's, you know, it's, it's a little bit of revenge that we, we need to come with, uh, you know, and, and, and make an impact in that game. Phil West. Okay. First of all, uh, congrats on the win Thank and getting you. in the playoffs. Um, and then just obviously, I mean, three straight losses before this one. This this could be the turnaround of something good going into the playoffs. Um, how cathartic is this, and and how how do you feel about the the players and kind of the turnaround they've had here? I like how you always you you start with a three losses, and now we got this. Um, <laughs> It's, it's good. It's good to get a win. Um, it's good to be back home and, and obviously in front of our fans. Um, you know, we've had good performances here, so this was, you know, it was, it was solid. It was a difficult start. We managed it. Uh, like I said, we grind, and, you know, the fans help us. The energy in the stadium is, is, is quite um, obvious, and the players feed off that. We, you know, we gain momentum by scoring goals. This, this, this fan base in this city pushes us and encourages us, and when we grab a goal, you can see how quick the game goes in our direction. So those are positives, and and, you know, the, the next game is a challenging one. Good team, good quality players. Um, but, you know, certainly we have a ways to hurt them, and, and, and they're, they're a resilient bunch as well. So we'll, we'll, we will uh, freshen up, as I say, and, and get ready for that game on Saturday. Yeah, and obviously bringing GTA into the game, um, 
genius move. What what in the game made you see that you could bring him in and that he would make this kind of difference? Yeah, they're one for one. They were in a three four one two. They were high pressing. They were they were one for one all over the field. Um, that's not what we expected. So it took us a little while to find our feet in the first half. Um, and there were some opportunities. We still created some some situations. We've played against this this structure before, but Musa has a physicality that there's not a there's not a player on their team that can can deal with Musa individually on a one v one. So um, I wanted to give it some time in the second half, but I, I had my mind pretty clearly made up. I went quickly to get the subs in and and make an impact with a few things. Obviously speed, but power and and again it's about pushing the tempo. We there's 11 guys on that field. For, there's probably like eight guys for Salt Lake that don't usually get significant minutes. It's it's going to take a toll. It's going to take a toll. So keep pushing. Keep, um, you know, obviously we want to we want to put our imprint on the game. But, you know, bringing in Musa, his physicality is is different. It's 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 noticeably different. So I'm really happy for him. Chris. Yeah. Um, with Musa, I, that's what I was going to ask is what made him the, the choice. And you just kind of laid that yeah. out. But also, what have you seen from him the last few weeks? Obviously, we saw some passion from him with the red card a couple yeah. of weeks ago. But, um, you know, what have you seen from him working his way in, getting an opportunity like this? It's it's challenging. I mean, Moose has been here. He doesn't speak English that well. He's learned a bit. He's probably learned more Spanish than he has English with, with our group. Um, and he's had a baby recently that he hasn't seen. He lost a brother and a grandfather this year. I mean, it's been a tough year. I mean, when we talk about what our roots are about and the adversity that you face um, as a soccer player, we're, we're talking about bigger things. And um, he's hung in there. And, you know, most importantly, he stayed committed and connected to this group. The group has stayed committed and connected to him. Uh, there's good relationships with him off the field, but when he comes in, he knows what he can do. I mean, in training, he does this type of stuff all the time. He he is impossible to deal with, and you know the opportunities have been challenging. Times, you know, we, we have to make you know decisions on on roster and certainly numbers, and um, you know there's a lot that goes into that. But I, I was so happy for him to be able to come in and contribute, and um, you know much deserved. He he's he's shown um, you know certainly why we, we had such good interest in him and, and hopes for him. And um, as he grows into this, this experience, I think, you know, we're, we're hopeful he can continue to have success. Yeah. And then uh, Emiliano's first start, just curious on your thoughts and what you saw over yeah. the course of his 60. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, I think it was moments of, you know, certainly some quality. And like, like anyone that's coming to you midseason, it's challenging. I mean, it's going to be tough to get up to speed. This team's high pressing. It's one for one. Um, so the picture that we were presenting, uh, you know, in discussing what the opponent was going to be changes a little bit. It doesn't matter. I mean, he's a technically good player, and um, he will continue to help us and make us better as he gets more comfortable. But um, the guys, the guys pushed, and what I what I loved was again the the calm and certainly the intensity that we were able to come into the second half with and build momentum. And that's you know that's a sign, obviously, of a of a good team, a mature team that's not too rattled by the difficulties of the first half. So you know, Emiliano will will continue to. To, um, to get better as, as he gets more comfortable with all of us. Arch. Josh, congratulations. Thank um, you. Emiliano, following up on, on that point, he had a really big defensive play, I think about minute 55, minute 56, comes back yeah. in defense with Diego Luna's right in on goal with Stuber. Yeah. He makes that big block, that big intervention. Did the energy change on the bench right there? Did that kind of you know, give you guys a little bit of a lift after kind of scuffling? At the end of the first half and everything. Yeah, I don't. I mean, to give us energy, I don't know, but it's a, it's a great. It's a testament to his responsibility. He's a very very smart player. When we talk about the game and we review video, he's actually saying things before we actually step into that space and kind of detail it. So, he's very alert and very aware. Um, you know, onboarding him is 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 going to take a little time. He's he's coming here late in the um, certainly the late in our season where we're we're up and running. But um, his energy and his interest obviously is is key for us. You know, we have. A number of wingers now that can contribute. Diego Fagundes has two more assists tonight. Uh, his contribution has been fantastic. Ethan again comes in and gives us a nice burst and a, and a, and a you know a bump in, in the outside position off the crossbar. To, you know, obviously Musa deals with it well, but um, the collective and and this group to stay committed and connected to each other is quite important. So, you know, did it give us a little momentum? Possibly, possibly. Coach, congratulations on Thank the win you. and clinching the playoffs. Thank you. First half. Seemed to be challenging yeah. a bit. I know the substitutions in the second half, that was a big boost. But was there something in during halftime, you know, was something said, something done, something because it did seem even before the substitutions, the team came yeah. out more energized. Yeah you know, almost more aggressive. I think so. I think there's a couple things that happen. Again, this 
this structure that they came in with was not the structure they played with in recently, four, five, six, seven games. They used the same structure last year um, against us. It's very aggressive. You know, they had a lot of fresh legs, so they wanted to come out and press us and, and make it difficult, which they did. So there's that challenge. And when you're one for one all over the field, it's, it's difficult. Emiliano, Diego, and Maxi, um, you know, in 1v1s with their opponents, it's going to be challenging. But there are other ways to challenge their back line and then now give other players time and space. Sebastian right away moved higher in the second half to ask a question of Herrera, which held him a little bit more, that gave Diego more space. So when we see that, and we we're talking about it in the first half, we have video that when we come in at halftime, we can help paint a very clear picture of how we want to go out into these next five, ten minutes and, and a little, you know, have, have an adjustment that can, can ask different questions and challenge the opponent. So I think that started. And then as we introduced other players, they bring different qualities that we were just able to punish them with. And, you know, the contributions of Emiliano to help prevent a goal, you know, could lift us. But now once we grabbed a goal, I think it was it was one way traffic. And then it was just a matter of finishing them off. And on top of everything, you got a clean sheet tonight. Yeah. I mean, I know those are yeah. hard to come by. They are. But just That's talk our eighth about one this year. That's our eighth one. But we Talk were, about the defensive you know, efforts for the club tonight. It was good. And, and yeah, I, I missed that in talking to the guys afterwards. But a, but a clean sheet, um, again, the ability to grind and suffer when we needed to, I think, was was, was there. And, uh, you know, Brad made a couple good saves that, that, that you, know, asked a, you know, certainly asked a question of him. But it's always going to come down to the group and the collective and, and how we want to prevent and, and, and distribute responsibility. But um, clean sheets are a good thing. We can score goals. I don't think there's any doubt we've shown all year we can score goals. If we keep the opponent at bay and don't give up goals, it, there's a strong chance that we're going to win games. So really pleased for, for the entire group. We got time for one or two more if we're going to grab some of the players. Go ahead, Katie. Um, so it's not in, I mean, this has happened multiple times where you've made subs yeah. and goals have come immediately after. So my question is, how do you know when and who to, to sub in in all these games? And I know it's a, a kind of a case by case basis, but just if you could give a general uh, kind of statement around how you know when to throw these key players in the mix. Yeah, I think we probably are, are just behind LFC. I don't know what the numbers are, but, we, you know, uh, the contributions from sub this year is, is, has been extremely good. I mean, I don't know how many goals it is, Ryan. I don't know if you know offhand, but Pull it up. We've, we've done a great job with that. I think part of it is understanding what the dynamic of the game looks like, what the qualities of the players coming in can add to it. Um, for me, again, right away in the first half, when I see them one for one, I know they're going to have a big, big problem with Busa. And my mind went immediately to him. I held for about 10 minutes, but I told Davey and, and, and Nolan right away, these guys are, need to be ready. And we're going to go with three guys to get fresh legs, but more importantly, um, to get Musa in there. Ethan can stretch them. And with the detail and the, you know, the adjustments that we made, I, I, you know, I felt those things were going to be quite helpful. And they, they paid off. But uh, you got to give a lot of credit to Musa as well. Um, you know, coming in, using his physicality, bringing other players into the game, staying alert in and around goal. Ruben Gabrielson had maybe one of the assists of, of the year, <laughs> with a little redirect, yeah. that center back getting forward. But um, it was, um, you know, it was a, a com you know a combination of things that, that go into that decision. But most importantly, I'm I'm pleased that these guys come in and contribute, and and obviously we win the game. Austin FC has 13 goals from substitutions, second most in MLS. There we go. Oh, nice. Stats, nice. baby, stats, data. <laughs> There's a recipe. Yeah. Um, so for Musa, when he came off the bench, did he already know what his role was, or did you have specific words for him? Was it a game time decision? I told him at halftime, be ready. He's coming, and um, I didn't. I wasn't gonna waste, you know, waste too much time. I knew the addition would give us something different. If they wanted to change structure, which I, they kind of, they, they kind of morphed into a few things later in the game. But um, you know, even having, if they went back, I was, I was totally fine because we can use his, certainly his feet coming underneath, which. We we did a little bit with, with Maxi at times, but um, he would have given us a few things that, again, would ask different questions. Justin Glad and um, their back line was going to have trouble with, with a guy like Musa, and, and that was what was most obvious to me. But we still need runners and verticality to cause problems. Seba now higher, running out of midfield, asked a different question of Herrera. So those things played into now giving us a little more space and, and the ability to, to take advantage of a, of a 1v1 on the back line. Very nice. Last one. Sure. Um, how are how is the uh, Rigoni and um, Driussi duo going for you? Is it's it great. Your expectations? Yeah, it's Could it's it gonna like anything. It will take a little bit of time. I think you know. I think his interest and his eagerness to learn and understand what we're doing is quite clear. Um, you know, he's he's coming into a very you know congested 
you know, moment of the season. It's a lot of pressure. Everybody's fighting for playoffs. So it's, it's, there's an intensity. Not that he hasn't played in intense environments, but um, we had Sebastian come in at a time where now we could grow into the season a little bit. He was, you know, in the summer. So he's at the latter half, the back half of summer, and he's, he's only been available for a handful of games, basically, not even that. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to keep pushing him and getting him minutes and keep preparing him. He will have um, the ability to help give us different qualities. And as he's here next year, he'll get on boarded a little more he'll get more comfortable in the surroundings and and obviously with the league as well but um you know I like I like the variety that we have in our in our players as on wings and certainly at strikers and what our fullbacks you know it's a good it's a good group we're very well balanced and we got to keep getting wins and keep pushing forward let's do one more question and then uh, we'll wrap up uh, coach, congrats tonight. Uh, really excited to cover my first press event. All, All right. the professionals Welcome. already asked Welcome. the best questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they stole it from me. I'm very sorry. So uh, watching this team, being a resident, uh, being a big soccer fan, so many firsts, uh, first playoff, uh, it, it's going to be exciting. First hat trick. Um, I'm going to call it right now first MVP. That'd be great. No, That'd I, be I guess great. I should not be a fan. Uh, but how was uh, the first streaker? Yeah, in Q two, I didn't get to see it. Uh, I didn't get to FC see it. History, but it, it's you know it's keeping Austin weird. It's, it's part of our. It's part of what we are and who we are. No problems as long as he doesn't uh, have too many issues with players or interaction with players in that moment. Well, I think we're all all right. But um, it happens. He got it a happens. free pair of shorts out of it. Don't want to <laughs> encourage that activity. But no, all right. Yeah. Keep Austin weird. That's a good place to end. Thank it. You. Let's <laughs> go ahead and wrap up. Um, follow Emily 